Hi, so、um, hello. I was going to say good morning, but I realized this is only for my time zone. So it's good morning if you're in the West Coast. Good afternoon, good evening, and maybe not good night. Don't go to sleep. So today I'm going to talk about how to build an IoT or smart devices prototypes with using Raspberry Pi. All right. Hope it's going to be fun. So quickly. Oh, so it's about myself. So my name is Tomomi. You might, yeah, you might already have known me as a girly Mac on some social media. It's actually my Twitter handle is a girly underscore Mac. And I'm a senior developer evangelist at a company called PubNub in San Francisco. I'm going to talk a little more about the company later. And I'm also a front end developer, actually. So, yeah, I get involved in a playing around with the hardware hacking recently and I find it's really fun. So, I'm not sure what,、uh, what you are, but I believe many of you are actually front, up, front end engineers like me. So, yeah, hopefully my talk's g o n n a make more sense to you. And yeah, lastly, I'm a cat lady of the interweb. I'm not g o n n a talk too much about cats and cat memes I have created in the past, but, anyways, many times when you Google my name, you get a lot of cat photos instead of my photos. So, today、um, I'm going to talk about, briefly talk about IoT and then、uh, learn how to send and receive data using PubNav and using Python. Don't go away if you're a JavaScript engineer and don't code in Python. I'm not really a Python engineer either, so I try to make it easy. <laughs> and then、uh, I'm going to do some wiring using breadboard and LED register and all the fun things. Then、uh, we're going to code, you know, we're going to just make a complete circuit and code how to blink LED. And lastly,、uh, you're going to make it an IoT. So basically, you're going to IoT fight your device. So, this is about Internet of Things. So, this is something、uh, Cisco h a v e observed.、Um, I forgot when. It's not that new, new data, but a while ago, Cisco h a v e observed a number of、um, non human and connected an internet. It suppressed a number of actually human during, I think it was 2008. Yes, it, during 2008. So before that, maybe around 2003, you know, non human versus human ratio was only 0.08. But now there are more machines and like bots and crawlers and And other devices are connected to the internet. And now, like 2000, well, it's 2016 now, but、uh, last year was like, like 3.47 was the ratio. And uh,、um, Cisco estimates、um, 50 billion devices and objects will be connected to the internet by 2020. So it's really getting a big deal these days. And there are smart devices available out there now, like GE Link, Smart Bulb. And the one below is a Cinder. It's a smart、uh, sensing cooker. It's like George Foreman grill on steroid, kind of. And you know, Nest. Actually, yeah, maybe not.、And、Nest, maybe this is the most famous one, I mean, the well known one in the United States. Apparently, not in other,、uh, other countries. So, this is a learning thermostat. You can control your you know, room temperature and such. And the one below is Amazon Dash button. It's kind of an interesting concept. You know, you can just press the button to order some household items. Like in this case, it's tight, it's a laundry detergent. It's kind of crazy, I thought. <laughs> But yeah, it's an interesting idea. And the one on the top right is a Wittings, it's a smart body analyzer. It's basically a, a weight scale. So I have one of those for myself. Because, yeah, I gain so much weight after I joined this company. We have so much free food. Yeah, so I need to lose some weight. And, well, yeah, this actually successfully, yeah, I, I su- successfully lost some weight. But, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that screwed up. So I have to use this again. And the whistle is like, I can say this is like Fitbit for your dogs. It's kind of cool. I have a cat, but my cat doesn't go out, so he doesn't need this. And then recently, I found something funny. <laughs> and a boy, boy, I got smart ass devices. So basically, this is a rectal thermometer. <laughs> so there are so many interesting products out there. But 
In these days, when we're talking about Internet of Things, are actually Bluetooth of Things. So you get a light bulb at home, and you have a mobile phone, and you know they are directly connected to each other. But you know, Bluetooth range is kind of short, so you can operate your household items like smart devices when you're at home, but probably not when you're away. So many times, you know, you want to control your like doesn't have to be light bulbs, but you know, room temperature or lock, oh, maybe not locks, but something. Maybe when you're at the work, when you're still, you know, I don't know, maybe minutes away from home. So in that case, you need internet, right? So uh, light bulb can connect in Wi-Fi, and your phone has some sort of connectivity. It could be Wi-Fi, it could be 4G. So now it's connected on over the internet, so it can talk to each other. And in this case, yeah, you need somebody in between. You know, can connect directly. It's like cloud. Well, maybe I don't like to use the word cloud because it's kind of vague. But basically, I can say a data center. If something goes in between to send and to receive data. It's like sending means, hey, turn the lights on or make it make a light bulb like pink or something. And then light bulb is like, okay. So that can be done with an internet. So something goes in between. So uh, this is what actually PubNub take care of. So yes, like again, I told you in the beginning, I work at a company called PubNub. So this is what we do. So PubNub is a um, globally distributed real-time data stream network. We call it DNS. And we manage data flow like, across devices and apps, if that's a software-based. And you can create well, actually, it's a two-way communication and tuned from every device in the world. That's what I say here in the slide. So, yeah, you can go check it out on pubnub.com. But um, use case-wise, uh, you can use pubnub to create uh, apps like uh, chat rooms, uh, multiplayer gaming, maybe vehicle location tracking, like financial data, like, you know, like a stock chart and such. And maybe some collaborative teaching tools. doesn't have to be for teaching, but it's so many interesting collaborative applications that you can achieve. And also uh, IoT and smart homes. So those are parentheses I added. Actually, it's a real use case is done by actual companies. So uh, maybe I should have included a screenshot if you're not familiar with Periscope. Periscope is actually um, in a part of Twitter, right? So when you are video casting, like using your phone and casting some interesting things going on, people can actually add comments and press into, you know, grow, what is that, grow, like hearts. Maybe it's like a like or favorite kind of, but a whole bunch of hearts, the each hearts. Those are actually public messages. So it's quite an interesting use case. So, uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about prototyping of Internet of Things. So instead of using smart light bulb, uh, you can use LED and Raspberry Pi. So I can talk a little about uh, Pi, Raspberry Pi here. Let's see. So, um, hold on a second. So this talk is actually uh, intended to be for a workshop. So I'm going to have a workshop, so extra two of one full day workshops at uh, Ford is, and Ford Ford Conf and in the coming no that's next month actually. So I recreated actually not recreated like created this slides from scratch to fit for this webinar. So you can't really sh yeah you can't really you know work with me with a Raspberry Pi device. An actual workshop I'm giving a uh, you know a Raspberry Pi two to everybody in the class. So I, I'm going to switch to my webcam or something to show it to you sometimes. But if you want to see um, detailed steps, like instruction, how to set it up, I have actually written up like everything, every steps you need at uh, GitHub. So I have a GitHub repo. So github.com slash pubnob slash workshop dash raspberry pi. So you can take a look at, but basically um, when you have a raspberry pi, you have a SD card slot. So that's where your operating system goes. So I am using Raspbian today. So that's a Debian based operating system uh, optimized for Raspberry Pi. 
And uh, when you have Raspberry Pi 2, you have four USB slots. So you can have Wi-Fi adapters there. So now your Pi is uh, Wi-Fi enabled. And you can use a keyboard, mouse, any peripherals you want. And uh, HDMI to go to monitor. And finally, it goes to the power source. So I'm going to show the real thing later. It's kind of pain to keep switching back and forth with camera just like so. Maybe I don't do this now. So once you install Raspberry OS and start your Raspberry Pi, that's a command start X. And you see this GUI, you know, user interface just like this. So first thing you want to do is maybe config. And uh, when you are using Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi adapter, you need to set up your Wi-Fi. Then uh, when you set up Wi-Fi with the same Wi-Fi network with your computer, you can SSH into your Raspberry Pi from your Mac or Linux or whatever. So it's easier to work. Of course, you can work directly to the Raspberry Pi because you can have all the peripherals, right? And HDMI to the monitor. You can. But you know, many times when you already have like IDE, you are so familiar to use with, so why not? So many times when I want to do some coding in some projects, I actually use my Mac to do this. So once you get into Raspberry Pi, I mean Raspberry, you can open up the terminal and the type hostname dash uppercase I that you yeah you get IP address of this your device. So you can SSH from your computer. So let's say when I'm using my Mac. Uh, you know, just SSH, Pi, it's a your, your username, it's a default username. So that's usually Pi unless you changed it. And add and your IP address. And that's going to ask you a password. And the default password is Raspberry. So let me see. Um, okay. I'm going to show my terminal here. So let's see. So my Raspberry Pi is already connected here. And IP address of my Pi is 10 and 996, 66, and 101. So, so now you're in Raspberry Pi. So you can do whatever. Oh, well, many times I use actually a cyber DAG. So you can set it up, so you can SSH from this. It's actually FTP client, but it can connect SSH as well. So I can open connections. So when you have a, um, some files and stuff, you can just edit. OK. Yeah, edit on your IDE. In this case, I think it's opening Xcode. So any changes are reflect to the Raspberry Pi, so it's quite handy. So you can program on the Raspberry Pi with a Python, Scratch, Java, Ruby, and C and C++ already there. And of course, again, this is Linux space, so you can just install and use any other languages you want that works on you know the Linux. So okay let's get started with Python. So initially I mean the first first one you before I would say before you install anything you might want to update all the software and upgrade the system. Otherwise you might see some error when you try to install something else. So let's do that. And once it's done Oh, I gotta tell you, this upgrade might take a while. Five minutes, 10 minutes, I don't know, might take a while. And after that, you can install uh, Python. I'm using python-dev. And uh, after that, you can install some package management pip. It's a PIP, pip. But oh, let's say you want to use JavaScript. Yes, I am too, actually. I'm a JavaScript developer. So of course, you can install Node.js if you want. So you can use wget, and I recommend use Node ARM because it's probably the easiest way to install Node.js into your Raspberry Pi. I've heard many people have struggled to install, but 
this is actually really the way to go. It's easy. So you can either uh, install the latest one or probably you can install an earlier one, you know, the pre um, IOJS March one, like 0 0.12, 0 0.12, I think. Yeah, but uh, I'm using Python today. Yes, not the Node.js. The reason is a um, there are so many more references. I mean, first of all, raspberrypi.org have recommend that using Python. And when you are like having some problem, issues, questions, when you go Googling around, most of the uh, answers you want is actually in Python, maybe. So the, there are so many more informations using Python than JavaScript. So uh, today I'm using Python, but there's Again, you can use Node.js to do what I'm going to do today. I even have written some blog posts on my personal blog, girlmac.com. And recently, I have published in Tooth Plus. Actually, I think it was published just yesterday or day before. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it later. So uh, then, yeah, I'm going to quickly talk about PubNav here. So I. Yeah, well, let's install it first. So it's a sudo, and you can use a, a pip to install PubNav. Again, it probably fails if you don't properly upgrade your system first. So after everything, get Pythons and everything, just install PubNav. And then uh, let's try this Hello World. I have the source code here and GitHub. So basically, the exercise here is try to publish and subscribe, which is a, a key component for like creating Internet of Things. So let's do this. So first, uh, you import PubNub, and second, you initialize a PubNub object with uh, uh, your API keys. So uh, to get this, yeah, I have to ask you to go to pubnub.com and sign up and get your own keys. So you should get publish key and subscribe keys. There are some other keys like secret keys and such, but for this um, example, this exercise, I'm only using publish key and subscribe key. Or if you wanna just quickly try, you can use a demo. That key works, but again, so many people are using demo keys, so you are basically sharing the account with a whole bunch of other people. And this is how you publish. So you set some channel name, uh, some arbitrary name. I just named it Hello Pi. It can be anything. And data is some object. It's actually JSON object here. So you can have anything in there. But in this example, I'm just using username and message. And then um, the last line here. Uh, it's a pub publish API, publish method here. So you can publish to this channel, actually publish this uh, data object to this channel. And in this callback here, it's just a, a success callback here. So well, I'm using the same one for error callback as well. So if something happened like success or fail, it prints up something. So let me see. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can show that to you too. So so to run this code, it's a sudo python hello pi. And you can see the data coming through by using this PubNub console. I think this UI is actually an old one. We have a newer one. But it should work a similar way. OK, let's see. I, hmm, OK, I can show it to you. It's hard to type. Um, I think it's a hello bye. So you see the success callback. I know it's boring, but let's see. Let's try it again. So this is a console, PubNub console I'm using. So you have a channel name and a publish key, a subscribe key. I'm using demo keys instead of my own. Let's see. I run this again. So you see this. So now your message sent. So you can subscribe this message from elsewhere. Could be a web browser, could be some other devices. So I, okay, 
I'm going to talk about how to subscribe messages later on, but this is really the first step using PubNub. It's quite easy. Okay. So let's wire something up. So next step is, uh, oops, did I skip? Yes. <laughs> So now I'm going to talk about Hello World of Hardware, which is a blinking LED. So yeah, of course, you know, for the software, Hello World is basically printing out Hello World. For the hardware, I would say LED, just blinking LED. So you're going to create circuits just like this. So what do you need here is Raspberry Pi 2. You don't need a Wi-Fi now for the first example, but you will need when you create an IoT device. Uh, prototypes later and one breadboard and two male female jumper wires and preferably in the two different colors i usually use red for power and black for ground it's easier to distinguish both otherwise you're going to confuse yourself and register i'm using 200 ohm this time and led so that's what it is so let's see I have everything here. I'm just breaking up right now. Did I lose something? Yes. No, no, that's fine. Okay, hold on a second. So, oh, before I'm going to show this, uh, how to wire, I'm going to just talk about a little bit about background of things like physics. To be honest, yes, I totally forgot all those physics, you know, classes, like the things I learned in physics classes in high school and college. Totally forgot until recently. So yeah, I have to really refresh my memory. So these are LEDs. So LEDs, when you have a, a just LED, not like turn it on, it's just clear. You don't know which color you have. But when it turns on, you see the colors. And each color it has yeah different um, voltage. The red one's point around about one point nine, and the violet. It's like 3.2. It's kind of like a rainbow spectrum, right? So you can kind of guess which one has lowest, which one's highest. But most importantly, when you wire things, wire your circuit, uh, you have to know those two legs here. And when you take a look at LED, one leg is longer than others. And longer leg is anode. Uh, it's a positive end. And the shorter end is cathode, it's negative end. And if you mess it up, if you don't know what that is, you, your target might not work, but you know, you'll get used to it. So the one, the diagram on the right hand side is uh, actual circuit that we're going to create now. But you need a, a resistor here. The reason we need a resistor is uh, when you know supplying too much power, too much voltage to the LED, LED might not be able to like handle it and it breaks. I don't say breaks, but maybe yeah, maybe it burns actually. You can smell. That's not gonna be fun. So you have to have a proper resistor, resistance here. So how to calculate is, you know, R equal to V over I. That's something, yes, yeah, you learn in a school and I forgot because you don't use it in real life. But yeah, now you're using it here. So V, uh, source voltage Vs is from Raspberry Pi and Vf is forward voltage. It's uh, actually LED and voltage drop. And divided by current, you go through an LED. And Raspberry Pi and voltage source we're using is 3.3. And forward voltage on red LED, let's say using red, because we don't, let's say we don't know which color you have. So it's kind of safe to assume this is red. So use 1.9 and divided by uh, 200 milliamp, but you have to use amp here, so 0.02. So those numbers actually uh, come, you should have some sort of like, fact sheet or something when you buy LED from the manufacturer. So you should know. So in this case, I got 70, but I'm using 200 or maybe 220 on because I have it and it's safe. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't do anything bad. So I'm using just some larger resistance here. And when you're taking a look at the register, uh, they are colors. It's either four bands, 
or five bands. So let's say you have four, and the first color in this picture here, the first one is yellow, so yellow means four. And next one's purple, that means seven. And next one's a multiplier, flyer, and red is two, so that means a, a 10 to the power of two. And the last one is a total length. So in this case, it's four, seven, so it's 47, and multiply by, because it's a multiplier, multiply by a uh, thousand, which is 10 point power two, right? So it's a 4.7K. So you have 4.7K ohms. If you have five bands, uh, it's similar. It's just more like precise. So the first one is red means two, and the black is zero, and next one's zero, and another one is a multiplier. Multiplier, it's zero. So ten to the power ten is, I mean, the ten to the power zero is one, right? So it's two zero zero, so two hundred, and multiply by one, so you have two hundred ohms here, and tolerance of only one percent. And the breadboard, yeah, it's good to know what you're using. So uh, they are, yes, yeah, uh, this is an electronic breadboard. It's a good tool. It's solderless, and uh, you know it's really great tool, great tool to prototype. And each row, I'm gonna show the real thing soon. But uh, when you have, let's say, a mini, I have a mini here. And if you have a mini breadboard, so uh, well, you see a bunch of holes here, but the one in the same rows are all connected. So it has conductive metal on the back. So any pins, or LEDs, or resistor, or anything you connect in the same lane, or I say same rows are all connected. So if your circuit doesn't work, it's probably because let's say LED, you know, polar is opposite, or maybe those rows are somehow one row off, or something like that. And if you have a bigger one, you might have a uh, power. Uh, lane on this rail power rails on the side say positive and negative so those rails go on a vertical but in the center like a middle part is just like a mini it's the same thing so again this is um a circuit you're going to create so the volt uh, source here is a raspberry pi and you're using led and the register and this is a circuit Okay, I'm going to switch to a camera. Actually, I don't know how to use a webcam here. So I am going to wait, hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to use photo booth. Can you see? Well, I can actually hear your voice. So I don't know if you can see me. I hope you do. Hello. <laughs> I can see you. All right, cool. So let's do it. So this is breadboard. Mini breadboard. So again, like I see, like um, I told you earlier, each row is connected, but in one side. But those two are not connected unless you are your. Okay, and this is LED. I'm hiding the leg, but you can see one leg is longer than other. So the longer one is positive end. Remember this. So let's see. I'm gonna just use first LED. I put the longer end in this side, so that's right hand side. Oh wait, it's left for you, I guess. So this is LED. This is power. So this red one's for power. It should be connected with the longer leg. So I'm gonna connect it here. Oh, it's wrong. It's wrong one. So those longer legs and these red guys should be in the same rail. Then I'm going to give this register. So this doesn't have any side. You can just bend it. So usually it comes with like straight, right? You can just bend it to fit in your breadboard. And it doesn't have any side, so you can use it anyway. So this goes to the one end, to the LED shoulder leg side. Like this, I know it's hard to see, but then this other end here is connected with ground. All right now, I'm going to connect this to a Raspberry Pi pin. So, yeah, that's Raspberry Pi. I was 
tried to show earlier. And this is, this thing is blue light is um, Wi-Fi adapter. And it has a SD card here. So it has the Raspbian OS. And this is connected to power. So these are GPIO pins. I'm going to talk about later a little bit too. So each pin has a kind of meaning. So in this way, so I have this cheat sheet. So you can say, you can tell the first one, like pin one is a power 3.3 volt and ground is a pin six. So I'm going to connect that. Wait, so this is six and it's, and I'm putting the power in the end. Yay, can you see? Oh, you might not be able to see this, but LED is on now. It's orange. Bama. I don't think you can really see the color, but it is on. How about using dark background? Oh no, I can't really see. But anyways, this is working, and it should be working when your circuit is complete. See, it's like everything's just nicely connected here. Okay, I'm going back to the slide. But I'm coming back to this live demo again later. I don't know if the camera is still on, but let's see. So yeah, basically this is a diagram of what I just created. Same thing. But this time, yeah, you're just physically connecting those wires. So those are completed circuit and should just light uh, lights up the LED. But next, oh, I guess actually, actually I want to talk about GPIO pins. But like again, I mentioned earlier, these uh, res, um, GPIO pins for Raspberry Pi, and the GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. So this might not make sense to you now, but once you start wiring. You need this and you know exactly what it means. And it has some GPI, they have two naming conventions. Those one, you know, those numbers in a circle are pin, like physical pin numbers. But any numbers after GPIO, in this case GPIO 18, that's a GPIO numbers. Some pro, I think I'm going to use it, yeah, GPIO 4 and pin 7 later when you program. So those numbers are important when you use code. So let's um, make it programmable. So now move this red one, it's a power, to the GPIO4. I'm doing this now. Okay. So now your LED should be off because you know this is not automatically connected anymore. You have to tell Raspberry Pi to turn it on. You have to code. So this is a Python code to um, blink LED. So you got to import GPIO libraries and uh, uh, this line here in the set mode, you have GPIO.bcm, that's uh, set to a pin type to uh, GPIO numbers. If you want to have a physical numbers, you can change to, I think it was board. And LED equal to four, let's give it this, that indicates we're using GPIO four pins. And a GPIO setup, so you set LED as a pin output. Then uh, it's a full loop. You can kind of guess, yes, it's looping for six times. And it's toggling this LED state, a true and a false in a half second intervals here. So uh, these GPIO pins are digital pins, not analog. What it means, you know, what it means by digital is it's always state is on or off, or zero, I mean one or zero, or true or false. That's all you get, so it's a digital. So you don't get anything in between. If you want to change the intensity of light, you have to use an analog method. Um, Pi 2 doesn't have analog pins, like physical pins, so you have to do this in uh, using like a P PWL, and, like with software. And I actually have written about this in an article somewhere, but I'm not going to talk about it today. So we're just using um, digital pins today. The source code is here on the GitHub. Oh, 
Oops, I think I skip. I think I should show the real thing here. Mm, okay, live demo time. Come on, camera. Yeah. So, here's what I get. So, this red one here. Oh, I So, it used to be in a power, but I moved to GPIO, whatever, GPIO 4. That's all I did. And circuit is the same. And I already have code here on Raspberry Pi. So I think it's called LED.py. Let me see. So sudo. You need a sudo when you're sending command to Raspberry Pi. I can't type right. Python. Uh, 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 uh. So when I run, you should see it lights up. Blink in the six times. Did you see that? I'm doing a game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think you can see. Ta da! All right, it's done. So the next step is because this time I'm just writing in command line, right? I'm not command line, just writing the program from the terminal. But let's make it an IoT. So we are going to create some web interface to control this LED. So instead of running straight from terminal, you create some HTML with JavaScript, have some button on it. And when you press button, uh, this LED blinks. And yes, the button should be working from like anywhere in the world, as long as you have internet available. Okay, it's going back to slide. All right, so IoT Pi in your circuit here in the Raspberry Pi. So now what I want to do is using PubNub that I told you earlier. So yeah, PubNub is a middleman. So we're going to create a web interface that should work from your browser or your mobile phone. And publishing a message means sending some signal. It's like, hey, turn it on. Then PubNav send a message to the Raspberry Pi. So basically Raspberry Pi is subscribing the data and telling LED to blink. So that's really simple, but that's basically what I'm going to do now. So first, I'll create a web client using JavaScript. Yay, JavaScript. So we have a JavaScript SDK. Oh, I didn't include this in the slide, but uh, in your HTML, you include PubNub library, right? Then in your JavaScript, you initialize this using sub your subscribe key and a publish key. Again, I'm asking you to use your own keys, but I'm using this demo keys for to just show it to you here. And in the HTML, so I have a button, like some, yeah, you can use just button element, like button uh, ID go to, whatever, disco, <laughs> and then, yeah, so use um, query selector or something to get the object, so the object button here, so when buttons, and had an event listener here, so when the buttons clicked, basically uh, send this message to PubNub, so using this PubNub publish method here, and uh, send in the channel name, I'm calling it disco, and a message, it's an object here. You can send any object or JSON. You don't have to use JSON. You can use just JavaScript object here. Either way works. And LED and one. It doesn't have to be in the same data scheme, but you can just do whatever. But I'm just calling LED. It's one that just triggers the Raspberry Pi. Simple. And this is uh, uh, the Python code who runs in a Raspberry Pi. So those two codes are separated, right? And they run in different places. So this is for a Raspberry Pi code in Python. So yeah, initialize your keys and then stick with same, uh, same, oops, same channel name here, Disco. So we, you know, a web interface and this Raspberry Pi connected. The same channel, same keys. And here, so oh shoot, sorry. So in the last, uh, last line here, you see the subscribe method. 
So basically, when the data subscribe, it's pretty much automatic once you initialize it. So when it's subscribed and the success callback is this callback here and say M in channel. So if the message came to the Raspberry Pi is LED equal to one, um, blink this LED. So same thing I showed earlier. So source code, it's not source code actually. This is a web interface I created. Let me see, do I have it here? Mm. Oh yes, so this is a web interface. I can actually show the code quickly. Mm. Oh, this is not the right repo. Hold on a second, no it is. Web. So this is our HTML uh, for the web interface. Uh, okay, this section is all CSS. I put everything in one file because I'm lazy. Oh, here. So this is a script. Include, so you got to get a PubNub latest one with version. Oh, 3.7 is kind of old. I wrote this code a while ago. So you can check that on PubNub's website to see which version is latest. And here, yeah, it's really simple. So this is just a button. Yeah, and uh, add event listener here. So it's nothing more than I just show it to on the slide. And this is what I get. And I'm going to do the demo. All right, hello me. So let's run this. So circuit, I mean, the wiring, everything same, same as the one I used in last exercise. Wait, I forgot the name. Remote dash LED. Okay. So when I run this, nothing happens. Of course, you shouldn't see anything happens because this LED is going to blink only when you get message from the web interface. Okay. So. I am going to press this. I just press this and now it's blinking. Can you see? Yay, I'm trying again. <laughs> Let's go. I know this is kind of silly, but this is really a, the first step of it, IoT, really, because you're just making this LED works on the internet, right? So, um, yeah, so real thing. So, uh, Insteon is one of our customers who has this home automation hub, and they have, uh, let's say, this in this picture, it's an iOS app, so you can control your lights, garage door, and such. This is the same concept, really. Of course, the light bulb is so much nicer than this cheap little LED, but basically, we're doing the same thing here. So, uh, it has SDKs for uh, embedded to like a chipset, like an Atom chip, or maybe um, what MediaTek, microchip, blah blah. There's so many uh, chips. We are working with the chip companies too. So, you want to create a real thing, you can, yeah, really. But, of course, you know, I'm a web dev, but for an engineer, and many of you, I believe many of you are too. So it's really, maybe we have more opportunities creating this uh, user interface in the actual user experience for those IoT apps these days. It will be so great if you can prototype the whole thing, you know. So I think this is really a new field that I believe it's not like I'm saying like each web dev should know, but it's great to know, you know, great for all the front end. It doesn't have to front end, but the web developers to know how to create, you know, hardware prototypes. It's pretty fun. So I'm not going to talk about more today, but on my um, workshop I'm having next month, I'm going to use a few more sensors. 
like uh, motion sensors, proximity sensors, and one in the picture is a temperature sensor. It actually uh, sense temperature and moisture, like humidity in air. So we can create something other way around. So this LED example was you send a message from web interface, let's say mobile phone, to the Pi, but in this exercise is sending from Pi, so sending this uh, temperature information to the web browser to create some data visualization like this using D3. This animation here is a fake. I'm just using random, like math random, to generate numbers. Of course, you know, <laughs> each city's temperature is nothing like that, but that's the idea. So we can create real-time animated data visualization and using a real uh, temperature sensor. Would be, I think it's cool, really. Yeah, so um, I think that's all I have today. And uh, here's the resources. You can learn more about Raspberry Pi at raspberrypi.org. And PubNub, yeah, our web page is pubnub.com. And I have all the instructions, more extra things in uh, this GitHub repo. I have some Node.js example, but I haven't really updated. So I think there's something wrong there, too. So I got to really take care of it. But for all the Python examples, it should be fine. And this slide deck is actually on the Google Docs. So yeah, if you want to take a look at it, I'm not sure if it is uh, uppercase I or lowercase L anyways, but I have this slide available too. And I believe this um, this webinar is recorded, so you should be able to uh, review it later too. All right, so thank you so much. And I have, yeah, I write a bunch of blogs at PubNov, and I have my own website called girlmac.com. Yep, all right. I'm done. Awesome, Shelly. Momi. Thank you so much. Before we um, dive into some questions, um, everybody that is listening, if you have questions, there is um, a questions tab on your screen. If you uh, want to just go ahead and start oh typing gosh, them in there. Uh, and Tomomi can... Uh, go through them shortly. I do want to just give everybody a heads up. We just checked. There are only three uh, spots available for tickets to uh, Tomomi's workshops, February 9th and 11th. So head on over to forwardjs.com to get those because we are going to sell out. So that's awesome. Um, and yeah, go ahead and start <laughs> taking your questions in. And Tomomi, I will get over to you. There are some in there. Do you see them? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I had a math mistake, <laughs> but but the actual number is correct. So yes, ten to the power of two is hundred, not thousand. Yeah, but overall, forty-seven multiplied by hundred is actually four point seven k. So I got number right, but the slide was wrong, and I read it wrong. Thank you. <laughs> it's too early for me. Oh, maybe now it's eleven. <laughs> okay, um, Mike. What flavor of Linux is OS and so on? It's um, Debian. I mean, it's a Raspbian. It's actually derived from Debian. But you can install Windows 10 too if you want. I'm just using Debian, I mean, the Raspbian here. But yes, if you're Windows developers, yeah, why not? There are some other OS you can install too. I haven't tried. Um, last slide. A set last like right? I'm not sure what I mean by that. Sorry. And those are mass questions. What color? Oh, okay. Sorry. I wasn't really following all those questions as I speak. I should have. So some of the questions, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Sorry. Oh, and Alex, thank you. Yeah, he have give me this um, cheat sheet URL. So yeah, if you want to see this GPIO pins cheat sheet, you can go to uh, modmypi.com. It's M-O-D-M-Y-P-I.com slash blog slash raspberry dash pi dash GPIO dash cheat dash sheet. Yeah, they're really, it comes in handy. Without it, it's really hard to program. I mean, this uh, wire. Is it possible to get the slides when I'm showing? Yes. Oh, yeah. So this talk has been recorded, so you can see it later. And I included the link in the last slide. So this slide is live on Google Docs. So I might modify it later. Yeah, I think I should 
fix my math. <laughs> Great, so you could see blinks. I, I know, I was worried if we could see all the <laughs> lights. Uh, will this slide on for? Okay, that's being answered. Nice work, Tomomi. Thank you, Richard. And thank you, Andy. And high five, Julie. Thank you. Okay. All right, this being answered. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Sam. Okay, uh, Sean. Thank you. Can you? Type the cheat sheet URL. Oh, so yes, um, cheat sheet URL. I think I somebody gave me earlier. Alec gave me earlier. But you can actually Google around and find out too. Oh, for security purpose, can you run a code other than root? Um, I'm actually not sure. I didn't really work on the security side. To be honest, I was always running from root. But um, yes, yeah, so there are always security issues. This talks about just prototyping, so I didn't really talk anything about it. But these days, a chipset, uh, chip manufacturer like uh, Atmob, they are actually including uh, ECC um, encryption within their chipset, I heard. So there are going to be uh, so many different types. Oh, it's a different questions, actually. But... Uh, you can establish security too. And of course, uh, for if you use using PubNub, we do take care of the more security things, called, something called um, Access Manager. That's basically uh, admin can grant, you know, uh, I mean, giving a permission, like a granting and denying permission to user or each device, so you can control each device manually. I know this is different. It's not exactly what uh, you asked me, but... There's some you can yeah take care of security in different manners when you work in real device. And Katie, thank you. Uh, great workshop. All right, Annie, Annie Rudy. Sorry, can't pronounce your name correctly, but thank you. And do you have any web tutorial about these topics? Yes. So I've written so many articles actually, not so many for this hardware things. But I have written some tutorials on pubnub.com slash blog. I've written some last year. I have written something using Node.js too. And I have written a Japanese tutorial on HTML5 experts.jp as well. And yesterday I published one piece. That's not Python. That's Node.js as well, but on Toot Plus, Toot Plus code. And I have a girlymac.com. It's my own web page, and I have written some stuff. And I don't write books for myself, but I review one book about hardware, and I'm doing another one that's coming from another publisher, too. So, yes, I actually write many, and I'm going to write more, so stay tuned. Okay, did I answer everything pretty much? Hopefully. Okay. Um, can you put the GitHub link? Okay, let me see. I can't really type well in my setting here, but uh, 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 uh. I hope you can see this here. So this is GitHub repo on github.com slash pubnub slash workshop dash raspberry pi. So this repo has all kind of information. So if you find something wrong, yeah, just send me a pull request. All right, thank you.